Welcome to Chalk Talk, Dama Public School's weekly news magazine. I'm Diane Locker, your host. We're at Galileo Magnet High School this week, and we're here for a very special purpose. Galileo High School has once again been named one of the top high schools in the nation. I use the phrase once again because this has happened on many occasions. This is a really unusual school, a little bit different and what we're going to do is we're going to see that you walk around the school, see what's going on, and talk with the principal, Jay Lancaster, about why this school is one of the top high schools in the nation. Jay, uh, mentioned early, uh, in the introduction to the show that you had been named one of the top high schools this year. Now, I believe this was done by the Daily Beast. Yes, uh, the Daily Beast merged with Newsweek, so it's part of the old Newsweek list. Now, we've been named before by Newsweek, haven't we? Yes, we've made uh, Newsweek. We've also made U.S. News and the Washington Post top high schools in America list. I think if this might be a broad statement, just about every year you're in operation, we're named one of the top high schools on one of the lists that you talk about. Over the last several years, we've been pretty consistent. So, yes, we're doing some great things. Now, let's talk about the recent one. Let's, let's start off there and kind of work backwards now. About how many schools were involved in this? Uh, their criteria, they start with schools that have a graduation rate over 85%, and that left 1,200 schools in the United States. Now, I think that you, and we were talking a little bit earlier, and you told me this was an application process, but, but I don't, it's not the type of application process where you say, gee, let's see if we can win this. You had to be invited, didn't you? Exactly. They take the schools of uh, their, their, meet their original criteria, graduation rate 85%, and that left 1,200 schools. And then they invited those schools to apply, and then they ranked the top 700 or so. Where did they get their information of who qualifies to even be sent an application? Is that state information? State and federal graduation rates. When you get the application, uh, what were the types of things that they were looking for? Do they already know that you uh, qualify for the graduation rate? What else were they looking for? Uh, it's rigor is the main criteria. They take a look at our graduation rate. They take a look at our college acceptance rate, our um, test scores, SAT, ACT test scores, how many students that are taking advanced placement, dual enrollment, and IB credit. So, after they get that initial criteria of graduation rate, then it's all about the rigor. All right. I want you to, for the community, to define two things that you just talked about there. Let's talk about rigor. When you say rigor, you're talking about the curriculum, aren't you? Yes. Uh, not only the curriculum, but what we offer as far as college credit, what we offer in advanced placement and international baccalaureate, but also how well our students score on state SOL tests and uh, national college entrance exams. I want to go back to, I said I had several things I wanted you to define, and one of those is international baccalaureate. Now, I believe that um, this is the only school in the city offering the, uh, I will, I'm going to say, the international baccalaureate diploma program. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, it's a worldwide curriculum, and we're the only school in the region that offers that. Just to give you an idea, uh, most people are familiar with advanced placement through College Board. Uh, our AP classes are weighted one point, so an A gives them a 5.0 on a 4.0 scale. The rigor of the IB is so high that our students get a 5.5 because the coursework is that demanding. I think that's probably the best explanation of rigor if you can put a number to it. I think that's, that helps us understand right. what you mean by rigor. Now, when you talk about acceptance to college, do you have any idea of your graduating class? How many go on to college? Last year, we had everybody but three students that went into the military that were accepted at the school of their choice. We had a 100% graduation rate that was accepted in to at least a community college. How many of your graduating class years last year earned their international baccalaureate diplomas? Because you can earn a high school diploma, and that international baccalaureate diploma is kind of, it's a different one. It is. Uh, there's a... Um, a scale that they must earn on their IB test worldwide. They must earn 24 points. Uh, last year we had three students that in addition to their high school diploma earned their international baccalaureate diploma. And I think when you, I think you just mentioned the test and scoring. It's important to know 
that those tests are not scored here in Danville, that they're sent all over the world as you probably receive tests here from all over the world to grade to keep everything, let's say, fair and even. Right. It's sent around the world. We sent tests last year to China, Brazil, Scotland, Canada. It uh, depends on the subject tests. They're sent to professors and teachers throughout the world to grade those tests. Where an AP test may have one part, most of the IB tests are three parts. So it's a very, very rigorous testing system. When, we, when you talk about the, uh, this, uh, the Newsweek based this on rigor, part of it on, on rigor, was the International Baccalaureate Program part of what they judged you by, or is that just didn't apply, or did you have to put that in the application? How did it come into what the award? They look at that. Uh, they look at a ratio of how many IB tests we take as compared to our whole student body, and the higher the percentage of students taking IB or AP tests, that increases your rigor for your schools. I think it's important to say here for the community's information too is that advanced placement or IB, both of those offer advantages as a freshman in college depending on the college you go to. Is that correct? Right. Each college can make their choice as far as what they accept, uh, but IB is scored on a scale of one to seven. Advanced placement's uh, one to five, so threes on AP and fours on IB tests usually get you college credit. So, so we have many students that leave here with, you know, 20 to 30 hours of college credit. It wouldn't be a misstatement to say that we have students that have left here that have pretty much their freshman courses out of the way. Yes, and we're working with DCC to get the 4 plus 2 program to where they'll graduate with their associate's degree too. So you'll be able to attend Galileo and also probably take courses at DCC so that when you leave high school, you've got your associate's degree. Yes, our students could possibly graduate with a high school diploma, an associate's degree, and an IB World diploma. I see more awards coming for the school. Let's go back now and talk about a little bit of history. You are now probably, what, um, 10, 15 years old now, talking about the school? Right, uh, 13th year. 13th year. When you started out, you started out with strands, um, bio bioinformatics, uh, technology strand, have those remained? How, how is it, the curriculum structured now? We still have the strands. They've changed over time. We started with a partnership with NASA and through federal cuts and magnet money. We no longer have the air and space strand, but we still have the biotechnology. We have a computer uh, Microsoft Academy strand, and we've added a publication strand. Is it safe to say that students here are, let's say, on a one-to-one -one basis with computers? Yes. Well, our building's full of technology, whether it be smart boards or laptops in the classroom. Our students are very hands-on. Now, after the break, we're going to be taking a tour of the school, and I, th I think that's important because we have a picture of what schools look like. And this building is the old Sears building. How old? Uh, I believe the original building was back in the 50s and 60s. So we're a school that doesn't feel like a traditional school. You don't even look like a traditional school coming in. And of course, this doesn't look like a traditional school, what's behind us right now. Uh, if, you, if you look at the space, though, you've got classrooms. You've got a lunchroom. It's laid out, but it's, I would say, non-traditional. Very non-traditional. Uh, we're very unique when it comes to some of our programs, our phys ed. We travel throughout the city. We go, uh, we bowl, we work out at um, surrounding businesses. So we're very unique in what we do. I would have to say we do not have a marching band. We do not have a football team. We do not have some of the things that a more traditional type high school would have. No, but we do have cross country. Uh, a young man won his last two events, so we're doing very well there. We have soccer, and we compete in the VHSL in publications, uh, academic bowl, debate, forensics. I think you also, I think began, starting last year, maybe a year before last, you work with GW in the robotics program. Yes, we're partners with GW and DPS First Robotics. You mentioned a little bit earlier, and I want to clarify something. You started off as a magnet high school. You are still a magnet high school and the only magnet school here in Danville. 
Uh, that means that no one is, let's say, um, compelled to go to this school. No, we're a school of choice. How many students do you have? Uh, approximately 270 this year. And what is your capacity? I'd say around 300. Okay, so you're close to capacity. What I'd like to do after the break is take a tour of the school and look at some of the what I'm going to call unique spaces that are in this school that are different from, I would say, regular schools. And we'll take a look at some of that technology, and if we're lucky, we'll be able to talk to some of the students. Sounds great. Be sure to come back after the break because we're going to take you on a tour of the school, and you're going to see just how different the school is from what you may think a school looks like. Having devices in my classroom helps foster an engaging atmosphere for my students. They're having to get a topic, research the topic, and then create an assignment using that topic. The students are more engaged on the devices because they're having to work in a collaborative group. They're having to research a topic and then create something for that assignment. Danville Public Schools wants our students to be on the cutting edge of technology as we prepare our students for an ever-changing economy. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're at Galileo Magnet High School, and as we talked about in the first half of the show, the reason we're here is Galileo was once again uh, named by Newsweek as one of the top schools in the nation. What we're going to do in the second half of the show is take a tour of the school and see what is unique about this school. In the first half of the show, Jay and I were talking to you about this school being different. It's in the old Sears building, and it's set up differently. And Jay, if you look behind us, where I'm looking here at the URW Credit Union. What is this? Yes, we have a fully functioning credit union for our students and teachers in the building, and our students are paid to man the credit union. I think a couple of years ago, I talked to one of the uh, students that was going to be working in the credit union, and she was talking about the fact that really she wanted to kind of go into finance or something like that, and what a unique way for her to get experience doing that. Now, they actually, you actually put money in there, teachers and yes. students. Uh, fully minor deposits, withdrawals, uh, check cashing, and then our students during the summer and during breaks can actually go work in the credit unions. So you mean off campus, off campus and yes. have part-time jobs? Yes, they're, they're paid by the URW, so. That's great. I mean, really on-the-job training. When you talk about unique spaces, what we're in here, now I believe this would be totally unique for a school. Yeah. What do you call this area, a very large area? This is our research center. It's an area where we have awards nights. Where students can come in here during lunch to work on the computers, uh, type papers, classrooms come in here. So it's a very unique space, and it kind of defines who we are. I like the way they left um, the ceiling exposed to keep some of the, um, let's say, ambience of the uh, building that was here. Yes, very unique architecture and design from the original magnet concept. Now, where are we going to go when we leave this um, center? Uh, we can take a look at a couple of our non-traditional classrooms. I'd like to do that. Let's start off. Okay. What classroom are we going to now? Uh, we're going to take a look at our IB Junior History class with Mr. Smith. Now, juniors, uh, were these students in part of the mid, of what we call uh, middle IB program? Uh, the middle years program has kind of faded away. Our students opt in starting their junior year. Their 10th grade year, they're required to do a series of projects and apply for the IB program. If they make up their mind in their... 10th grade year. 10th grade year. Yes. Let's take a look. Okay. Okay, this uh, quite a bit of equipment in this room. Yes, you'll see our uh, technology that's available. Also, non-traditional classroom as far as the tables, chairs. Um, this classroom was originally set up to be a teleconference room with cameras, and so that the uh, instructor could be recorded and you can carry on distance I, learning. I, I think at that time they were going to be working with other schools. They were. They were going to have sister schools in this classroom actually had cutting edge technology when it first opened. Since this is an IB class, what I'd like to do is maybe talk to a few of these students about their choice for IB. Sounds good. What's your name? I'm Caleb Cook. Caleb, you have made a decision that you're going to be in an IB history class. Yes. That's Why? 
Um, so I decided to do the, the IB program um, because I was interested in taking the most academically rigorous courses that I could. Um, I was originally deciding between um, governor's school or doing the IB program here. Um, and I talked with my guidance counselor and I, I talked with some of the teachers and I decided that, that for what I'm interested in, in doing, uh, the IB um, was the, the ideal choice. What are you interested in doing? Uh, I hope to one day be a computer scientist, um, so that's my dream job. Now, have you taken any other IB courses, or are you, or are you in the process of taking other IB courses? Yeah, right now um, I'm doing IB History, IB English, IB Theory of Knowledge, IB Math, um, and um, IB Psychology. Guess what? you got all the rigor that you're going to be able to handle. Yeah. That's, a, that's a tough schedule. Congratulations. Thank you. Hi. Hey. What's your name? Javante Kirby. And why did you choose to be in this history class? You could have taken another history class and it would have probably been a lot easier. To get a better education? You know what? That's the best answer I've heard yet. What do you want to do in the future? You're a junior now. It's not long until you start thinking about college. Um, I'm thinking about going to Drexel University or DePaul University for music. You've already made up your mind, haven't you? Mm-hmm. If you're going for music, what instrument do you play? Well, a lot of instruments like the tuba, the trumpet, the guitar. That's enough. That's enough. Taking any other IB classes besides this one? I'm taking IB English, IB Psychology, IB Theory of Knowledge, and that's it. You know what? That's enough. Congratulations. Mr. Smith, you're the instructor here in this class. This is a junior level IB history class. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. What's different in teaching a IB history class than if you were teaching a regular history class? Well, number one, the attention to detail is very important in this class. Uh, to give you an example, um, once the students reach their senior year, they will be taking three exams. It's about five and a half hours worth of history exams, and uh, everything is an essay-based uh, format. So uh, students will have a degree of selection in what they're going to choose to answer on the exams, but they're expected to write, nonetheless, a well-prepared statement uh, investigating an area of historical um, investigation. Like uh, right now, we are currently studying the First World War in detail. We just started the war today, as a matter of fact. So uh, that'll be one topic on their exam that they have to choose from to answer. Now, am I correct in saying that you cannot be an instructor in any of the international baccalaureate classes unless you've had special training? Uh, that's correct. Um, when I first came to Galileo, I had to go to Florida, St. Petersburg, Florida, uh, for like a four or five day workshop on an uh, international board, uh, baccalaureate program. If this is an IB history class, is it safe to say that the students that you have wanted to be in this class, it's not something that they're assigned to? And doesn't that make a difference in instruction and in your relationship with these students? Uh, I'd say most definitely. Uh, most people here want to be here, so yes. And one other thing, and I'm going to let you get back to teaching. Don't you think that in an IB class that it's more, let's say, on um, a college-level instruction system, more like a, a college class than, let's say, a high school class? Uh, yes, I do. Um, what the students are asked to do, I only see them twice a week um, in, in this class. They, they were in English class the other two days, and then a theory of knowledge class on Mondays. So uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays with the juniors and Mondays and, Mondays and Wednesdays with the seniors. Uh, in the meantime, they're expected to do a lot of reading and independent research out of class. So when they're actually in class. We're, we're typically discussing something they've read or uh, me lecturing, that sort of thing, or completing a test. Um, they have a lot of papers to write outside of class, a lot of independent work to, to be done. Uh, so there is a high level of uh, sort of uh, commitment and, and uh, independent. <clears throat> independent work that needs yes. to be completed. So, Thanks. Yes, no problem. What classroom are we in now? Right now we're in Ms. Ramsey's sociology class. Now, I see what, what I call a smart board. All of these classrooms are equipped with smart boards? Yes, we have interactive technology uh, smart boards. This right here is actually a mobile station that we could use throughout the school that she's using at this point. Now, what's being taught in here? Uh, this is sociology in this classroom. We also have World History 1 and 2, which notes all the timelines. I noticed back here in the back of the classroom, this must be some part of that original building. Yes, this gives you the unique character of Galileo when it was 
originally the Sears building. Uh, this was a glass area, and right around the corner was the automotive center. Now this is her study space with bean bags and chairs. So it's kind of a neat area. Very unique classroom. Now what I'd like to do now is go and see uh, some technology. Okay. I know we have lots of technology in here, but I believe you have a lab, don't you? Yes, our publications lab. Let's take a look at that. Okay. Technology, international baccalaureate, all of those things are very important, but what we see going on here I think is also just as important. And what is this? This is your, your theater class? Yes, we've really pushed our theater program over the last two years. We've done musicals. Uh, we had Peter Pan the musical last year and the year before Greece. This year we're doing a live production of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe that's going to be open for not only the parents but also for the elementary schools in Danville to attend. Now, the young lady that's up on the stage, she's probably got some part in one of these plays or she's reading for a part. Well, this is actually our theater class, so she may just be taking the class. Uh, a lot of the actual theater practice occurs after school. This is our make sure shift stage, and then we'll go to Bonner to put on our performances. Okay. Ah, she got a round of applause. Yes, Whatever she did. she did was good. Yes. Let's take a look at that computer lab. Obviously, this is your computer, one of your computer labs. I believe you have more than one, don't you? We do. This is our publication lab. Uh, they were recently a gold medalist through Columbia University and first place last year in the VHSL publications. What we need to do for the community is to define VHL. Uh, it's the Virginia High School League. They grade uh, yearbook, creative writing, and news magazine. And we were first place in yearbook, first place in... Uh, creative writing and second place in news magazine. Therefore, this is called a publishing class instead of a technology class? Yes, uh, we use... It's all, all done through technology. All the latest uh, publication software our students are exposed to. So when they graduate here and they move on to a career choice in publications, they have everything. So the students that are enrolled in this class right now are here because they want to be involved in publications or involved in those particular ones that you were talking about? Yes, or it could be just an elective, an interest as they explore some career choices. I think what I'll do is ask some questions around here and see why people are taking the classes that they're taking. Sounds good. I'm going to start right here. Hi. What's your name? My name is Mindy Mondel. Mindy, why did you choose publication? I'm very interested in the computer arts and designing. I think that some people, I, I, I understand what you mean by computer art, but computer art is not something that everybody thinks of when they think of art. So what do you do when you are working in, with computer art? What are you doing? We work with um, web design and Photoshop. How about you, young lady? Why did you take this class? Personally, I just love how like all the how like, they can make all these different designs on the computer, and so it's really my thing. So I love this class. What's your name? Jasmine Santi. And Jasmine, uh, what's your grade level? Eight. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Gosh, I see a whole group over here, trying to ignore me. Why did you decide to take publications? I mean, I like. Computers, basically, they're, that's something I just do every day. I work with computers and do computer stuff. What's your name? Nikita Morrison. Nikita, what's your grade level? Not, um, 10. I mean, 11. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was 10th last year, 11th this year, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what do you want to do when you get out of school? I actually want to go into nursing, to be honest to, with you. Into nursing? I'm going to hope that you get trained well. Cause people like me are going to need you. What's your name? Michaela Wells. And why did you decide to take publication? Well, I've taken some of the other classes, so I'm already used to most of the software. And so I'm just, I can do it very easily. And I like it. That's a good reason. What's your name? No matter. What grade are you in? Eighth. Eighth grade? Mm -hmm. And why did you decide to take a publications class? Because I'm... Uh, I want to learn about something about Photoshop because that's kind of, I like Photoshop stuff and, and design. So I can work, uh, like, mm, I can make some arts and stuff and some, I can, it can help me in the future. Too. It can help you in the future and it can help you right now when you take your camera out, can it? Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Hi there. Hi. What's your name? Holly Setliff. And Holly, why did you decide to take a publications class? Well, I think a computer is something that like you need in everyday life, so it's good to know how you can use it in different ways. Let me ask you another question I haven't asked other people. Why did you try to decide to go to Galileo? Well, the education is really good here, and it can help me get into a really good college when I get older. Older? You're kind of old now. Hello. What's your name? Hunter Crumpler. Hunter, why Galileo? I uh, just chose Galileo because I'd like a smaller school and not to be in just the classes here. Okay, now why publications class? Um, I like to do digital art and I want to kind of have a job in it. What kind of job? Um, I guess just design really, like digital design. Good choice. Thank you. Jay, a tour of the school like that lets me know why you're ranked as one of the top high schools in the nation. But I was talking a little bit about some more good news. Now, what would that be? We were just named uh, National Blue Ribbon School for the year uh, 2014 by the U.S. Department of Education. Now, what does that mean? Your blue ribbon. Now, blue ribbon that means you're 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 tops. You're good. But exactly what does it mean in terms of education if you're a blue ribbon school? Each state sets their own criteria and they submit a list to the National um, Board of Education and then from that they make the selection. We were chosen as an exemplary high performing school for the nation. There was only 48 schools in Virginia and we were the only high school chosen this year. I'm going to repeat that statement because I'm familiar with blue, blue ribbon schools but what you just said was you were the only high school chosen in the state of Virginia. Did you say that? Yes ma'am. That's a pretty high honor to me beyond just being a blue ribbon school, being the only high school in Virginia that's a blue ribbon school. Yes, it's a tremendous honor that we were chosen by the uh, U.S. Board of Education for our high performing and our rigor and graduation rates. Did I, did I understand you to say a little bit earlier when you we were talking about qualifying to be a blue ribbon school that it's um, once again like being chosen on a national level, it's based on state scores and things and information from the state? Yes, our state accreditation, our SOL scores in all four core areas, uh, namely math and English, our uh, graduation rates are some of the criteria uh, factored into that selection process. I think also when you mentioned graduation rates, here in this area, in our area, you're one of two schools in this area that has the highest graduation rate for high school. That's correct. We've averaged 90 plus percent graduation rate in the past four years. Well, it's remarkable. Those are national statistics. You've got state statistics, and we've got local statistics um, that point to one thing, and that is what a great school this is. Exactly. I have a tremendous faculty who's very dedicated to our students. Uh, we've got a great support from central office in downtown and it just allows my teachers to do a great job with the students and I think all these awards just reflect what happens in the classroom every day. And I think what's happening in the classroom has got to be really good because of all those awards and I want to congratulate you and, and everyone on this staff for the work that you do. I want to thank you for taking time out to take us around the school to show us exactly why you are the exemplary school that you are. So uh, thanks for the time that you've spent with us this week. And thank you for just recognizing uh, you know, our hard work and everything we've done with this. I truly appreciate it. You've earned it. You've earned it. I want to thank all of you for being with us this week and want to once again congratulate everyone on the Galileo staff and Mr. Lancaster here, the principal, for the remarkable work they're doing, not only on a national level, but on a state level and a local level. We're very proud of them, and it's one more example of some of the great things that we're doing here in Danville Public Schools.